here we are at the end of three turns in trivia. <laughs> I think three. I'm counting it as three. That's what I marked down. All right. Well, not a lot happened after the uh, operations that have been going on on the flanks. No big push in the center by either side. Both used their overall commanders large and many of the Carthaginian better commanders were used this way too to try and rally troops. And you can see Hannibal was able to get most of his running forces at least to not count as points against him at this point. Now, I'm always not certain I'm doing the right thing with that. That's I look at the points and I say, ah, you know, there's a lot of points leaving the board and the game could be over if I don't stop them. Uh, on the other hand, if you do stop them, you're paying an opportunity cost in actions you could take. So, for example, certainly could have been more um, recovering points along that central infantry line, which would make it a lot harder to attack. Uh, that's something that the Romans actually did a good deal of. They recovered a lot of their cohesion hits uh, with Sempronius and, and others. Uh, he also, he, I think he was more rallying stuff. Lower valued guys are better for recovery, but we're in a situation where the flanks are definitely collapsing on the Romans, and that's painful. Uh, I don't think they've, in, in a sense, I kind of wanted to push harder and see if I could break that entire center and try to wheel my army in two pieces to make it into some sort of fair melee o over those flanks. As it stands now, I've given a breather to the uh, Carthaginians by, by rallying my own forces. But I still don't have an answer on how to handle this and how to handle this. Uh, I'm trying to prevent losing right away, but that's not going to help if those flanks are just going to get rolled up further and route again. And it's that kind of decision-making that's tricky in this. Let's look at what we got. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 more points for the Romans. Puts them at 130. 1, and 10, 27 more points for Carthage. It's like 120, I think, was the Carthage limit, and 205 for Rome. Well, Rome's a lot further along the way there, and I don't know if there's anything I can do to stop that. Uh, because, ta you know, their, their tactical position is just not as impressive, in my view. I mean, even if they, I'll figure out those in a moment. Even if they do manage uh, I don't know. Yeah. I mean there's just there's no defense <laughs> at this point that I see. Anyway, I'll keep playing it out, painful as it is for the poor Romans and my back. Uh, it is an interesting scenario for me. I like watching uh, even unbalanced scenarios unfold. Well, this is turning into quite a miserable day for the Romans. Um, although they managed to drive off again some of the the uh, Celtic infantry, and then ran into recently rallied slingers that just broke. They see Romans coming and they say, "Ah, well, see those slingers are just a problem because I don't mind the ones that are out here. They're not doing anything. Nobody's hurting them." They're fine. But if they're routed, I have to do something about them or they're going to count against my points. On the other side, 
the Numenidian Cav has just demolished the left wing. These are just lights, but they slip around behind, they throw their javelin, and then they go ahead and, and close combat because they're getting uh, the tactical advantage, and they are very, very high morale units, or high tactical quality, which means, you know, they, they can afford to hit better stuff. We're seeing that over here where they drove off the uh, Roman cap. This is really what Kevin was pointing out to me was, dude, those cap are good. <laughs> I look and say, ah, weapon system versus weapon system. That's one thing that's kind of weird about this game. The weapon systems aren't as important as the quality of the units. And I'm not used to thinking that way. I'm used to thinking, oh, that's light infantry. I don't want to get near it with my heavies. I want to, you know, use cav or use lights of my own or whatever to try to chase it down and get it out of the field because following, I can't remember the guy, J.R. or J.A.R. Jones, came up with this whole tactical matrix where uh, this was a major, major factor. His whole, his whole theory was basically that Type A always beats Type B. It really doesn't matter. And I think that way. But the reality is... These light cav can act... So light cav would normally trump heavies because they can ride up, shoot, and leave. And they can't be impacted. But the idea of using light cav to attack, to charge the, the heavier stuff, that makes me feel queasy. That's just not how you expect them to act. But with the high tactical quality, these lights are actually pretty good. Anyway, uh, we're seeing the Roman left breaking here. Very, very careful not to get close enough to, to activate the Triari fully. Not that they could charge into combat or anything quite yet. Well, yeah, they could. Yeah, we're over, we're over half losses. So I'd rather not bring them into play if I can avoid it. Uh, if I do bring them into play, well, that's life. I'll live, you know, but much better if I can just slide along. Now, if I don't have a choice, I'm going to try to hit them as hard as I can and, and knock a bunch of them out for bonus points. <laughs> because hitting the Treari, you know, in their kind of defenseless state as they are right now, and the Cav could definitely do that, is probably enough to push them over. Right now we're looking at uh, 10, 20, 36 points. We're at 167 for the Romans, nothing new for Carthage. Plus, if anything, this guy's probably going to route. Some of these might. Uh, if anything else goes off the map, that's going to push it. So it's getting pretty close for the Romans, uh, the failure. And now the scattered defenses that the Romans had here, the Carthaginians have been able to break through that as well. Pretty much, there's just a couple of functioning Roman units caught in this pocket here, and they're doomed. And this whole flank, it's got to it's gotta try to swing down and, and collapse, because uh, otherwise there's just going to be continual attacks into it at extreme advantages. It's probably too late, though. I mean, <laughs> the Romans have probably lost this battle already. So Sempronius did what he could, trying to build up a line here. Um, let's see what we got here. As Drubal came through, now he didn't pound as hard as he possibly could have. He brought up reserves. He reinforced. He uh, restored order with a lot of his units. He, but he did uh, make one attack on here, and I think one other maybe. Yeah, down here we see somebody who slipped around chasing routed units. Speaking of which, here's a bunch of the Roman routers. Um, let's see what else we got. We got uh, Hannibal himself rallied his kind of shaky skirmishers, but then he launched his medium infantry, his North African troops, forward. And they actually did pretty well. They, again, attacking legions with legions. If whatever you've got, you want to be on the offensive. Maybe this is 
true with a lot of the units. It's not true with phalanxes. Phalanxes have this huge bonus to just letting somebody impale themselves on them. But you want the momentum in the infantry versus infantry fights for sure against the Romans. The legion loses its advantage, in fact, against things like uh, the medium infantry, the heavy infantry. Well, not the heavies. I don't think they have it there. Let me see. Yeah, they get it against the mediums and lights. And actually, both the mediums and lights can attack the legion. No, no, not the lights. But the mediums can attack the legion without suffering uh, the tactical bone, uh, bone in their case. I counted up the uh, points. Um, Carthaginians are going to have seven. Romans have 65 here. That's enough to put them at 196. I don't really see a point to playing out another turn. Uh, they're not going to hold. This army is breaking. It, you don't get to play out the routes in this game uh, and the pursuit. So there's just no chance at this point, and I would rather not waste eh, a couple hours, really, on something that's foregone conclusion, and I don't see it being much different than it is right now. Uh, anyway, I usually don't call them early, but in this case, it was an unbalanced scenario, supposedly, at the beginning, and, you know, the amount of effort for something this size to just keep going when it is this obvious. I mean, you know, the route points are completely subjective anyway. It's the designer's decision. What would it take to break the army? Well, if it were at all close over here, if there was any chance of getting anywhere near the route values that Carthage needs, but there isn't. Carthage would have to play completely suicidally, and even then I don't think they could manage it in the turn that they've got. I mean, the Romans are just going to lose. These guys are going to fall off the map, and the chance of rallying them is less than 50%. <laughs> These guys, same issue. I send Zempronius over so that I have something like a decent chance of rallying each unit. Well, then this line becomes unable to defend itself and gets cracked. It's, it's over. All right. So I'm going to send this one up as the wrap here.